evening and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now, have you ever met someone that is really paranoid and always thinks the worst of people or situations? Or have you got a wild imagination and sometimes just think things up and you always think that something's going on? Well, tonight we're going to be discussing this topic and finding out also what our special guests for tonight have to say on this. And they are private investigator Gina Nikas. Did I get that right, Gina? You did. You I did. did. <laughs> and also someone that we've had on before, Dr. Catherine Ayiva, who's a chartered clinical psychologist. Hello. 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 Welcome back to the show. Thank you very now, much. Now, we do have um, a few videos to share with you. So we're going to be showing different situations, maybe in the workplace, uh, relationships, things like that. And I'd love to get your opinion on them and where you think, you know, it's all in someone's mind and yes. how maybe... Because I, I should imagine, first of all, Eugene, you've had loads of situations where people have got it all wrong when they come to you. Well, and maybe some, or they normally... Let's wait and see. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, very no, interesting. We, we, it's, we've had a complete variety, but let's, really? let's have a look at the, oh, the videos okay. first. All right. And Catherine as well, maybe you can sort of tell us more about what goes on in the mind of someone that's quite paranoid and when you think maybe they're going too far or if they're, yeah. they're justified in what yeah. they're thinking. Because yeah. I think we've all been through something like that, we've been a bit paranoid about something and we found out actually, well, we weren't right, we got it all completely wrong. And other times when we were quite trusting mm. and then we found out actually so there was someone stabbing us mm. in the back, unfortunately. I think we've all been through that. So if you do stay tuned because we'd like to hear your opinion. If you want to email us as well, you can do so on Chris at chriscbshow.tv. But let's start off with our first video. So pay close attention. Ooh. Yeah, I'm trying to find these, but not this type, but the straight ones, you know, that go on the side. Do you think we've got some? Um, I think we had some for in <sighs> recently. Um, I've looked in that side. Are you sure it's not in the other cupboards? Oh, it's fine. How are you? Um, I'm all right, yeah. Good. Um, so I'm thinking I wanted to kind of talk to you about. Um, yeah. I don't know how to say this, really. Um, what? Why? Uh, stuff like that. Um... Basically, wait, 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 wait. Stuff like what? This? Stuff like that. I think What's that's, wrong? we're getting a bit too comfortable at work. Like, I don't know how you feel about me, but like, I just kind of have to lay it down and be like, <coughs> I'm sorry. I know it's, Michael, 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 it's Michael. funny, Shh. but like, Michael, Michael. at the same time, Michael. we're in a workplace just, and we have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just let me speak. I'm engaged. You know that. You know that. This is. You've got completely like, the wrong end of the oh, stick. Oh, serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Oi, come on. Because no, I thought that was going to be really uncomfortable. No, you know, like we played around and stuff. Yeah, like, we're just having a bit of a flirt. Yeah. Okay, 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 that's cool. Okay. I'm glad that's yeah? settled, yeah? Yeah, you good? Yeah, we're good? We're good? We're good? We're good. All right, all right. I'll see you later. Are you still going to the pub later? Um, yeah. Yeah? Good. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, so tricky work situation. I don't know about you ladies, but I kind of believed her that she wasn't actually trying anything on until we saw that last bit when she obviously looked really upset. Mm. But this is something that I think is quite common mm. in the workplace, isn't it? This flirting and then yes. sometimes is it like you're thinking, is this person for real? Are they, do they actually like me or is it just a bit of messing around? What did you think of the video there, Gina? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's interesting because he was tackling her, so obviously he's encountered behaviour from her before that's led him to believe mm -hmm. that she's flirting with him. Yeah. And personally, when I saw the head going from side to side, <laughs> I would have been inclined to agree with him. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that's quite interesting is I've encountered many situations, we've got called into many situations where this sort of thing has happened and then the person who has been doing the inappropriate behaviour is the one who's saying, oh no, it wasn't me, what really? And going into complete denial about it. Oh. So I think this is, this is quite a common occurrence. But personally, I would have said from her behaviour, mm -hmm. it was the showing of the jugular seven, seven <laughs> times, you know, the weak spot. But um, personally, you know, one could understand why he mm -hmm. made that assumption. 
Okay, I don't so know what it, was, to... it wasn't all in his mind. What do you think? Happened? Yeah, I mean, I think sort of watching that, it was quite interesting because I was sort of swaying both ways at, yeah. at various mm -hmm. points. And like you say, it was right at the end where she sort of seemed quite sort of upset and disappointed. I thought, oh, mm -hmm. maybe he was, he was right. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, that does happen a lot where people can't quite work out what's going on and, and they can get very mixed messages from people as well mm -hmm. in situations. Uh, but I think he tackled it quite sort of sensitively as well yeah. um, and I'm not sure everyone would have the sort of the courage to do that because you you don't want to come across as you think something's going on when it's not exactly it was quite a brave, yes. quite a brave move obviously yes. if um, I don't, it doesn't show in the video whether he was in a, supposed to be in a relationship or not but obviously if you are in a relationship and that is going on and you're uncomfortable with it you should say something immediately mm. before it continues because maybe that person doesn't know you or you're with someone or maybe they do and they don't care which is even worse so it's good to if you are going through that's a bit going off a bit off the topic but you should speak up and say something as he did yeah, yeah. and even if for example you got it completely wrong at least you've made you've made everything clear because maybe the person acts as if it wasn't, it was innocent, but really they had other, yeah. they had feelings yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the other thing that can be quite important is the kind of the power differential, you know, the power yeah. imbalance. If, if it say it's your boss, what yeah. do you do oh, then? Because yeah. that's not necessarily so no. easy to sort of bring that up in mm -hmm. that way. Um, so I think that can be a bit tricky for people to sort of manage. Some people might kind of feel quite overwhelmed. Yeah, but, it, but it is important and I think it's it's all too common that people don't want to speak up mm -hmm. you know in in the workplace most of us can do the nice things the praising and the supporting but when it comes to doing something that could potentially be a little bit confrontational mm -hmm. the majority of people don't really like to do that That's the clear of because it, they? they do mm -hmm. and they don't also want to be put on the back foot mm -hmm. you know we all want to be in a win-win situation yeah. Yeah. whereas this sort of situation is really demonstrating that you know, the chances are are the person's not going to admit to it mm -hmm. so it is a win a bit of a win-lose situation yeah, which is definitely. not nice now before we watch the next video i want to i should have done this at the beginning i'm sorry but mm -hmm. i can't wait to see the videos i should have asked a bit more about what you both do first of all <laughs> <laughs> sorry now Catherine, do you want to go first tell us a bit about what you do uh, sure i'm a clinical psychologist and i work with adolescents and adults and mm -hmm. sort of do a lot of work with children in care and sort of you know a lot of court reports and things like that but a lot of kind of mental health and okay. general mental health work okay and gina and gina gina's got two hats actually <laughs> i um i'm a management consultant and for many years i've been seeing an awful lot of workplace situations that have been difficult we must get to resolve back in to talk about those kind of things as well we've got to put for another show yeah. <laughs> but um that that led on to yeah. doing private investigation which is what i i'd, I'd, I'd not done it in a private capacity in a previous career mm -hmm. um private investigation agency was set up and we cover a whole range of things from um, human resources issues to matrimonial issues, family disputes, and do computer but forensics. What kind of things do you actually investigate exactly? Like, can you give us a few examples? Certainly. Um, for example, we've been we've been doing recently several cohabitation cases where um, wives, in our cases, it's wives have been getting quite large amounts of. Um, maintenance from financially from their husbands and actually they've got somebody living with them they've got mm. another partner living with them contributing to the household right okay so Definitely. we've been we've been doing that sort of cases we've had uh cases recently or of contested wills where we've had to look at handwriting forensics and we've also had workplace situations where we've had to go in and do computer forensics Ooh, sounds exciting though <laughs> well it's interesting you say that because it does i mean that people do think Think that it sounds exciting but i was saying to some, someone the other day you know there's always someone hurt mm, that's so, true yeah yes it's interesting it is very interesting and i feel passionate about doing it mm -hmm. because you're trying to get to what is truthful the at the end of it yeah. exactly but normally somebody is hurt and Isn't it upset better for them at the to end know of for it to be out in the open? oh absolutely <laughs> well it's it's better certainly better for one side but quite mm. often you know it means the other the other person and who am I to judge yeah. <laughs> you know who's in the right or who's wrong you can only present the evidence as it stands yeah. okay so. we are going to I don't think we've got time to watch another video and discuss it but I'd like to maybe talk about so we, we are going to show a video about romantic uh, relationship and uh, I think something that's very common is when people think someone is cheating on them 
Now, I know this is a bit of a loaded question, but would, what would you say? <laughs> what would you say? I like good, like good signs, pretty good signs that someone is cheating, apart from obviously catching them in the act. I think um, when stories don't add up. And mm -hmm. people often will slip up at some point. There'll yeah. be lots of inconsistencies, and I think that's usually a, a good sign. But if someone's very good at it, it's not always that <laughs> easy. So yeah. I think, you know, again, it's going with your intuition. And, mm -hmm. and this is the hard one, isn't it? Because it comes back to this, is it all in my mind or not? But, you know, mm -hmm. this, that nagging and it just won't go away. I think there is something there that it might not be cheating in the end, but it could mm -hmm. be some other kind of difficulty but I would Certainly say something that needs to be addressed yeah I would say. yeah so okay. I don't know what you, think? you, do you know you, have you had people come into you saying I think my husband or my wife or my partner are cheating on me can you check it out and see what's going yes, on yes we've had that very regularly and I have to say that more often than not they're right really yes Gosh. yes I mean what has happened in, on, in several instances is that um, people have picked up on the signs at an incredibly early stage mm. and when we've done the investigation we've seen the, the body language that demonstrates that there's some sort Something. of attraction there mm. but the partner has picked it up very early and there actually isn't anything that's an affair mm -hmm. but there is body language to demonstrate an attraction right. um, and then we've been called six months later and done the same thing, and it's a full-blown affair. Oh, wow, gosh. So, I mean, when, when Dr. Catherine said about, you know, the, the intuition, I would say the majority of the time, if people have that intuition, then it's certainly in, in the cases that we've dealt with, it's been right. All right, that's really interesting, because yes. we are going to watch a video about this after this break, so do join us after mm. this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and we are asking the question tonight, is it all in your mind? So we're discussing different situations and when you can tell whether it's just your, your imagination running wild or whether you have genuine cause for concern. Now I'm here with Dr. Catherine Ayivo and also private investigator Gina Negus and we watched a video before the break and we're also talking about um, people having affairs and whether you know, it's, a, it's a, well, the signs of people having an affair and everything. But let's take a look at this video and see maybe the flip side of everything. Hey, babe. Hey, hey. What's, what's good? This is a surprise. How are you doing? You Hi. Right? Why, are you, why are you here? Oh, Hi. Why, why are you here? What's going on? I was just coming to see how you are. How are you? Um, I'm good. Um... Uh, you want your lunch? What? What's yeah, I've got a half day today. Remember? Oh yeah, of course. You. Yeah, no, I kind of forgot about that. Oh, okay, cool. Looking um, cozy here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just boy. There's a lot to do, and I'm just gonna get. I was just about to get myself some coffee. Do you want a drink? Do you want anything? I'd love one. Okay, Thank yeah. you, babe. Did you get it? No, I didn't. Just, I'll just check. Because I did text you. I'll just, I'll just check. See if you got it. Oh, Not even my messages are on there, though. So do you, what, do you delete them? I don't really saw them. I mean, like, memory ain't got, like, pictures and whatnot on there. So, like, I don't, I don't really keep them. You, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? You're acting a bit... I don't know. Yeah, you can sit here. I'm going. Thanks. You sure you're right? I'll see you at home. You didn't even finish your coffee. Hey!
spoiling. It's a good one. There you go. Oh, nice one. See, I'm thinking of getting one of those. Oh, wow, she's really into this whole ancient stuff like ancient yeah. Greece, ancient Egypt, you everything. definitely get one for her. So you I have know, to go to Egypt no, to get one. No, no, no. They sell stuff like this on Portobello Road. Oh, serious? Yeah, get one for her. Yeah, You're always like talking that. about her. It's so sweet. She's more well done. I gotta get one. Oh, now let's look at the facts first of all. Now she did walk in and there was this woman sitting quite close to her man, sitting on the desk, which I think looks already quite into. And actually, if, I, if I'd been her, I would have said something immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just me. <laughs> get off his desk now and get out of here. <laughs> Politely, of course. And also, um, we see, like, she did check through his phone, but she didn't find anything, first mm. of all. Now, she did uh, also see them quite close in the kitchen where something was caught in the other woman's hair. And so we, we did see some facts there. But then it turns out that he wasn't actually seeing her. She, she got it a bit wrong. Now, I have to say, it, it did look suspicious, didn't it? Would you both agree it did look quite suspicious when she walked in and she was sort of there on the desk and the way she left quickly, that lady? No, yeah, no, Gina? I mean, I, for me, I think I would have interpreted that as something not quite right because I, I, there's something about the personal space yes, with exactly. your colleagues and different people mm -hmm. come into different parts of your personal space. Mm -hmm based on the kind of relationship that you have. So to, yeah. and she didn't just see a one-off situation, she saw sort of quite several intimate looking scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you could see how that could be easily um, sort of interpreted as, as something being up mm -hmm. with that situation, yeah. I think. What do you think, Gina? Well, on the other hand, you know, looking at it, the flip side, <laughs> that was actually quite a small office, wasn't it? So in order to talk, you know, it was a small office to she be in. moved over. So <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I'd be hang drawing and quartering, quartering him right at that stage. <laughs> However, when, when we got to the bit where, you know, mm. hands were going underneath the hair, that was, you know, not really appropriate behaviour in the mm. workplace. But on the other hand, there was nothing that you could tan, you know, put your hand on and yeah. say that's that's. And she seemed already suspicious even before she came yeah. into the yes. office. Like yeah. she, she was yes. already coming to check up on him. So now maybe that's a sign of someone that's insecure. Yes. Maybe she found out. You know, maybe she's seen this woman before and she thought oh, she's quite pretty and maybe my, my husband or my man's attracted to him and so she felt a bit uncomfortable, started coming to the office and then she's seen all this evidence mm. that something was going on. But then he, mm. on the other hand. He said at the end, oh, she's my world. And I would, he would even go to Egypt to get a necklace for her. <laughs> so that shows that we could get it completely yes. wrong. But it's like, where do we draw the line now? That's the thing. How do we really know if we're really getting it wrong and how much we should trust that person as well? That's a hard question, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. a hard question. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might be based on her experience mm. from the previous Past. situation yeah. so she mm. she tends to view the world more through those sort of eyes in that sort of looking for things yeah. and they match up and they sort of make her beliefs seem sort of mm -hmm. grounded um, and maybe there could have been a different context for them where they may have had some issues in the past again so she's more prone to judge that in in that way mm -hmm. um, so I think Again, it comes down to this kind of self-awareness and maybe being aware of mm. where your vulnerable spots are. Yeah. Because that can help you sort of start to understand if you're overly sensitive and sort of hypersensitive, really, and picking mm. things up mm. and interpreting them in certain ways. But it, it is a difficult one, I say. It is. It, um, is. it could be any, any one of a number of things that mm. has made her insecure yeah. in that way. That's right. Maybe so, even even her first relationship, and she's just a bit like clingy mm, to yeah. him, and like she, she's afraid of losing him, which can point to obviously her being insecure about herself and not really valuing herself because she's sort yeah. of clinging onto someone else and making that person her world. Or she could have been with somebody who had been unfaithful to her. Yeah, it could be you know so many a number of things. So many different reasons. things with that one. Now, with me, I'm the kind of person that will trust. I'm quite a trusting person, mm. and I have been hurt in the past and, and even recently because I've trusted certain people and then they will show something else. Not everyone, most people that I, I know are really nice actually. But I think it's better for, for myself. I think it's nicer to trust someone before and you know until the point where they if they break that trust, I think it's a better way to sort of live. Now obviously if it's to do with a relationship and it's something really obvious like maybe all of a sudden your partner's coming home really late and not and staying out the house the whole night and saying he's working that 
that would obviously make me suspicious. Mm -hmm. There's obvious things, but if, if there's nothing's happened and there's nothing obvious that's Try, I would say trust the person, trust your partner. If they've never given you reason to distrust them, mistrust them, then trust them. Because <laughs> yeah. the thing is, sometimes we can, we can actually even push things to happen. If we keep saying to someone, oh, you're having an affair, you're doing this, you're doing that, mm -hmm. that could even make them think, oh, do you know what? She doesn't trust me anyway, he doesn't trust me anyway, let me just go and do it. Most of the cases, people don't do that, but it doesn't set up a very good uh, foundation for a relationship, does it? No. no. It's very tricky. No. No. And I think if you've got to the point where you're not trusting someone to that extent, mm. then what on earth is the point of being with them in exactly. the first place? Exactly. Mm. Just making both lives miserable. Yeah, and, and another thing to, to also bear in mind as well, I mean, the, this was quite a young couple, mm -hmm. but I mean, the, you know, we come into contact with um, people that are on second, third marriages, mm. and they've got children involved. And that's a whole different ball game as well when people have got children um, yeah. as part of the equation because they can I and mean, they tend to be a lot more protective, not necessarily wanting to go headlong into a relationship unless they are absolutely 100% certain mm -hmm. and they've got proof to that yeah. fact. So okay. I think that's it's worth bearing in mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, shall we take a look at our next video? Um, I think that's everything. Um, one last thing. Yeah. I'm in a very difficult position, um, and as you know, I always, always try my utmost to, to, do, to do what is right for you guys. Yeah. Um, now, about your leaving party, very sorry to see you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's next Friday, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, obviously we all know that the other office needs one of us to be here till, till midnight yeah. every week. Um, you, you obviously don't forget that because it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, I need to decide which person it is that's going to miss the leaving party. Oh no. I know. Um, and the only way that I can think to make it totally fair yeah. is to put everybody's names in a hat and um, basically pick one out. Now, yeah. to make it totally fair yeah. on a next level, um, I'm going to have to put your name in there as well, Barbara. For my leaving party. What? Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I think that's everything. I'm in a rush because I've got this bloody meeting. Yeah. <laughs> ah! um, but it's been great. Um, really good meeting. Thank you all for your uh, observations. I'll take them all on board, as always. And uh, I really look forward to next Friday night, the leaving party. And let's hope that you're not in that hat. You know, you're not, you, you don't get picked out. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Bye bye. See you, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, bye. I can't believe you're doing What a ridiculous suggestion. I mean, my, okay, so you can have a leaving party for me, and I'll tell you what, she won't be there. That's ridiculous. I can't really think anyone in their right mind would have done that. But anyway, that's a bit of an extreme example. But just to highlight a point, by the way, we've only got about a minute left. So we're going to start talking about this one now and then continue after the break. What did you make of that situation, first of all, Catherine? Um, I, I thought that was quite fascinating. She didn't seem to pick up any cues mm -hmm. from anyone. She seemed very absorbed in her own sort of ideal that she was being this very democratic kind of boss. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she seemed like quite a people pleaser, but she didn't seem to sort of be drawing on any kind of feedback so that mm. was quite quite absurd really. <laughs> so but she obviously yeah. thought she was a great boss it was in in her mind she was a really good boss and she was very fair and you know tries to do her best for everyone but it, it turned out now I don't know if it's an isolated case or whether you know she does it all the time I know it's not just fiction anyway mm. but mm. what yeah. do you think Gina? Yeah, yeah so it's interesting I mean I, I would agree a hundred percent but then interestingly she did look quite manipulative when she made a point of touching them when mm. she was standing up, they were sitting down, which actually put them then on the back foot right, because okay. she's, you know, trying to make it all right by touching them, mm -hmm. which apart from being a little or bit saying patronizing. that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> yes, that's it. yes. Oh, really and I'm, not, I'm laughing about I it. I didn't even notice that one, actually. Yeah, and, yeah. and she was laughing about it, which mm -hmm. actually is, is diabolical, you know. <laughs> Promoted beyond her ability, I think, <laughs> that one. All right, so we're going to go to a quick break, and I think we're going to have to discuss that one a bit more after this. So do join us. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, 
Facebook and Twitter. Right, so before the break, we watched a video there of a boss that thought she was absolutely wonderful when in actual fact she wasn't, and she was actually quite manipulative as, as we were discussing before the break. But let's talk about also people that do think they're wonderful in their head, they, they're great, and they don't really like to be criticised or even constructive criticism they don't want to take. Now, why do you think, first of all, people are like that? Who wants to go first? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I think, you know, there can be that sort of, um, sometimes people have quite a fragile sense of self-esteem. So mm. it's, it can be a bit of a defence. Like, it, I, I, I want to believe I'm great and I, I, can only, I can only handle things that confirm that. So yeah. the minute you start to tell me something that mismatches that in any way, I reject it. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes those people turn it on to you and it's a, you're the one that's rubbish and you're jealous of them and that might be why you're sort of saying these awful things. Mm. Um, and some people kind of just have that experience growing up of always just hearing good things, how great they are. So it can be quite a shock mm -hmm. sometimes to hear um, different things to that. So, or someone could maybe have excelled all the way through their career up until that point and then maybe someone's sort of giving them a bit of different feedback and, and they can really reject that. It can be mm -hmm. quite quite difficult, I think, for people in those situations yeah. as well. So, yeah, that can be some of the reasons I think I've come across. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as well, I think we really have to, to think about things. Because if someone does come to you and say certain things and it might seem like a, a criticism and you might start th being actually paranoid and thinking everyone's out to get me, my boss doesn't like me, my work colleagues mm. don't like me, everyone's against me, and you put up this whole thing in your head. Mm. But before you start actually complaining and, and you know trying to thinking that everything's unfair, take a look at how you are performing as a person, as an employee at mm. your workplace. For example, if you're if you're coming in late every day, you're taking loads of tea breaks you're not meant to take. You're not performing the way you're supposed to be performing. And then you start, and then if then your boss calls you and says, look, you know, you need to change these things and or people are complaining about you. You can't then start thinking, oh, everyone's against me. Because actually, as a boss, they should bring you in and talk to you about mm -hmm. those things because that's unacceptable at work. But if you see that, you know, you're giving your best at work, you're, you know, you're, you're coming in on time, you're doing your best, you're, you're really working hard, you're not messing around or have, taking loads of toilet breaks, then, okay, then you can maybe think, oh, well, actually, something's going on here, I, I feel discriminated against because I'm really doing a, hard, a really good job here, but I'm not being mm. recognised for that. There's a, there's a big difference. So I think a person has to make sure that they, first of all, are doing their mm. best and performing well before they even start to, mm. to have these negative kind of thoughts. Yes. Yes. And I think as well in the workplace, um, it's all too common that people who are line managing don't actually say anything to maybe the employee mm. until you know, they've had somebody else really grumble about them. And yeah, actually they could yeah. have been nipping some of these little bits That's of true. poor behaviour in the Because it's not a nice thing to do, is it? it we, don't want, we don't like Abs to make people no, feel uncomfortable. No. And it's hard to no. do, it's hard to sort of and, say these And most, you know, as I said earlier, most of us can do the nice, soft, touchy-feely stuff, but actually doing the confrontational bit is is hard mm -hmm. but that's that's what the manager gets paid extra for at the end of the day <laughs> and they you know they should be that's what they're paid for they, they should be picking that up early yeah and addressing it early in proper line management before it gets to the point that people have mm -hmm. to complain about it now i'd like to hear more about your experiences before we watch our, our last video that we have anything really interesting that's happened that you would say look you know this was so obviously something wrong and it, you know the case turned out actually correct the person the person was thinking was right or the person got it completely wrong or maybe you're something with you Catherine as well maybe things obviously you have confidentiality mm. agreements yes. and stuff you can't obviously say everything but maybe some examples that you could give us mm. Do you want to yeah, go first? Yeah. Or? Okay. I think we're all desperate to hear about some yes. of <laughs> Well, of course, I'm bound by client confidentiality. Exactly, yeah. But we, we have had instances where um, people have had complaints made about them and we've had to go in and investigate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we, we go in completely impartially and trying to be very objective about it. Do people it know that you're there for that reason? Normally? Yes. Oh, I okay. mean, that would be done overtly so that, you oh, know... I didn't know that... that you yes, could have yeah. Private well, investigators well, say, to come say in. for example, um, you know, some, somebody has had one or two or three grievances mm -hmm. taken out against them. In a small company, for example, that's actually quite hard to find anyone who's sufficiently 
distant from it to be able to investigate it and deal right. with it properly. So we'll go in and we'll do it independently. Okay. And actually that to us, sense. it doesn't make, you know, it's no skin off harness, which, whichever way it goes, we're there to do it as fairly and as, as transparently as we possibly can. Mm. And we have had cases where there clearly has been inappropriate behaviour by the employee, the person that's had the grievance taken out against them, yeah. but they haven't seen it okay. in their behaviour. And um, you mentioned something about somebody being praised all their life, and I can think of one instance where somebody had clearly been put on a pedestal all the way through life when you heard the history of that particular person, mm -hmm. but actually that was spilling over into the workplace and they were being incredibly manipulative, m manipulative because they'd done it all, all their through lives. their life with their family. Mm. Now, nobody had addressed it with them in the family situation. They'd ended up going on through their education. No one had addressed it with them there. They'd done well, so why <laughs> it wasn't going to be addressed if they were doing okay. And then they get into a work situation and it all comes to a head. And that's incredibly sad. And then they sad. think everyone's, a, everyone's, and they think everyone's against them. Mm. And, and actually, they don't see what everyone else sees. And that's a no, that again is a no-win situation. That's hard. Everybody feels dreadful about that's it. That's hard, isn't it? It's is really hard. That's right, it's good to have some really good friends around you that actually tell mm. you the truth. Because if, if, you, yes. if you see, you're, you have a friend, and you obviously see things that are wrong in, in him or her, and you know that that's not great behaviour, but you're too afraid to say anything to them. That's mm. not being a good friend. I have some great friends because they do tell me, and my husband's brilliant with this as well. If he sees something and he, you know, he thinks it's inappropriate, he'll tell me immediately. Mm. And I love that because it's true. Sometimes we do things without even thinking or say something without even realizing what we're really saying and, yeah. or it could have other implications. And when there's someone there that actually cares enough for you to tell you, look, Chris or whoever, this, that wasn't good what you said. And even could be even something negative that you say about yourself. Mm. If you don't have those friends and great people around you to do that, it's, it's really hard, I think. And it's great for your personal development to have those. And it's great if you as a friend or a good wife or a good husband also speaks to your, your other half about it. Because mm. that's how we learn, that's how we develop. And we avoid these kinds of situations. Yeah. yeah. We really do. Yeah, definitely. Because a, a lot of the time, sort of, you'll be working with someone in therapy, and, and this is the, the whole idea of perspectives. Mm -hmm. Because you view the world through your own experiences, like we were saying before, you know, you, you, you have this background that builds up, and it's, it, it, it can be hard to step away from that. So mm -hmm. having other perspectives to sort of build into the thing you have can be useful to sort of help you just yeah. gain a different view. Because I always describe it as like, two people sitting in a room and mm. something happens, but I see it from this angle and you see it from that yeah. angle. Yeah. And actually sometimes it's useful to bring yeah. it together and then you've got a bit of a whole kind of picture. Yeah. And I just think, you know, for people that don't have those trusting, honest relationships, mm -hmm. they miss out on a lot of that stuff. Yeah. So they okay. end up with a very biased viewpoint. And That's then they right. just, it, it's, it's a kind of a, a vicious cycle really because the more you believe it the more evidence you seem to find mm. and then it can sort of really build up into this snowball effect so, of, of you know this belief that you have so mm -hmm. yeah and you know I would say if you haven't as Catherine's saying if you haven't had those people around you and you are in now a work situation or similar situation yeah. and okay one person says for example you're so unorganized or you're like this are you it was just one person okay but if two or three or four people are saying it and like it's an ongoing issue. Just listen to them. Just I know sometimes we can be really like kind of proud and not like to admit to our mistakes, but just take that on board and say, okay, I don't think that I'm unorganized, for example, but if other people are saying it, let me look into it. Let me try. Let me ask for help. Let me see where I can improve. And at least, you know, if it was, if it was un ungrounded, it, at least you've even proved even more. But at, le at least if they were right, you've done something about it as well. It's, it's, it's not a bad thing. Everyone's got their mistakes. Everyone has their little things here and there. Everyone. No one's perfect, as, as we always say. But it's worth, you know, listening to people sometimes, even if you really think that they're wrong, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so I think we've got time to watch the other video that we have and then probably discuss it after the break. So let's take a look at this. Oh. <sighs> Hiya. You're right. I don't even like I 
Oof. Okay. Um, Is everything okay? You know, like when like you just know certain things are just not right. Like you just have like that feeling, but then everyone kind of makes you. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're going crazy, but you're not going crazy because like it's like you know. Yeah. What do you mean though? Like you know, like you just know something's wrong. Something's not right. Yeah. Something isn't right, and you can't explain it. You know, just chill, don't worry about it. We just, we care about you, you're our friends, you huh? know what I mean? That's what we care about. Okay. And if there's anything you want to talk to us about, just talk to us, like, we're here for you. Yeah. We are, we're here for you. Like, out of work, we can go out. If you don't want to do it here, we can go out for a chat. Sure. Or whatever, after work, if you want yeah. to go pop to the, like, you wanna do that? Or restaurant. Okay. Maybe you should take a day off or something. I think I need, I need a holiday. I think that's what yeah. I need. I think I need to go I away. Do. I think. Do you know what? I'm gonna go book it now. Like it, just some days yeah. off. You don't need I'm to just go gonna, away. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go and to, to, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'll be back. I'll, I'll go and. I got your jacket. What would I do without you two, eh? <laughs> I'm really worried about him. I really hope he's okay. Maybe is he stressed from with work? What do you think? I don't know. I'm just gonna leave. I've got no one here. People talking behind my back. I'm done with it. I'm not gonna book a holiday, I'm just gonna leave. Just gonna go. Okay, so are people talking behind his back? Is it all in his mind? That's what we're going to be discussing after this break, so stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, just before the break, we watched that video of uh, a young man that was looking very um, unsettled, I would say, and thinking that people were talking about him. He felt, he felt um, uncomfortable at work and he just wasn't happy, was he, at all. Now, the question is, like, I think, well, I think a lot of people, we've all been through that where, oh, people are talking about me or people don't like me at some stage, whether it's in our teens or even, you know, older. How do we really know <laughs> if people are talking about us and when are we just sort of imagining it? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, as I was saying, I work a lot with teenagers as well, and this is something that comes up, and especially people are trying to belong to a group. Yeah. And there's a lot of this kind of trying to weigh yourself in against other people and what's going on. But the reality is that the prob people probably are at some point talking about you. And I think the question is whether it's malicious or, mm. or not. And I think yeah. that's something that it you know, what's, what's making you unsettled, what's causing you to feel unhappy? Have you heard something someone else is saying? Or is it just you walk into a room and you think people stop talking and they do it <laughs> repeatedly? I think there's sort of certain things that tend to send a bit of a signal. Um, it doesn't necessarily always mean that they're talking about you in a bad way, but I think there are definitely those sorts of things that, or people sort of sidle off out of a room every time you walk in and go off and sort of have these conversations that you somehow are never privy to. Mm -hmm. um, I think it can be quite difficult then because it, it, it can usually leave people feeling a bit out in the cold and a bit as if yeah. maybe there's, there's something going on there. Yeah. I so. mean, it's, it, it can easily happen, can't it? I mean, maybe yeah. the, the conversation that you saw was really innocent mm -hmm. and the only reason that they stopped talking when you walked in is because it was really private, it was between them. And you could have just get the wrong end of the stick and then you start imagining all these things. It, it's, it's, you know, it's very easy to happen, isn't it? Yeah. But at, on the other hand, okay, even if they are talking about you, <laughs> as we <laughs> say, how, 
happens. Sometimes there's just some horrible people out there. <laughs> or maybe, mm. uh, let me correct that, people that have been through a lot in life and then they behave in ways that are a bit negative. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people who, who like to express their opinion, mm. even though it might not necessarily be wanted or warranted. Exactly. So but we can't sort of, for example, he was thinking of leaving his job because yeah, he felt that's, uncomfortable that's, and yes. like, okay, the thing is, you leave a job, then you go somewhere else, and then the same thing is going to happen. Whatever social environment we'll be in, there's mm. always going to be that going, either, you know, talking positively or negatively as well. But we, I think we have to, ourselves have to get a stronger backbone sometimes and think, okay, not everyone's going to like me. There are people that are going to speak negatively about me, but I'll try and keep improving as a person. Mm. But what can I do? Not everyone's going to like me. And I think we have yeah. to just learn to live with that sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Which yeah. is, that's difficult. But I think the thing that was interesting there on the, on the clip was that he was trying to express something, but he wasn't actually saying anything. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. everyone was a bit baffled. And I think it is things like that that can almost worsen situations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you really have that feeling or belief, maybe sort of sounding it out to someone like we were saying earlier, almost sort of role playing how you're going to go in and discuss it so it comes out in a in a clearer way and yeah. people can maybe understand what you're trying to say because you know he he then left the room and then people were talking about his behavior so if he yeah. then eavesdropped into that conversation he would have been confirmed yeah. in his belief which would have made it mm. worse so i think there you know if you're trying to tackle some something like that it's kind of maybe knowing how to deal with it or knowing who to go to because there might be someone you sort of trust a bit more in that group or feel like mm -hmm. you can approach a little bit more so you could go to them and just sort of maybe voice some of your concern yeah. and maybe they can even but say look you know that i haven't heard anything so you, what yeah you're, you're you've got it all wrong and actually they say really nice things about you so maybe that would help hopefully <laughs> <one> <laughs> the opposite way <laughs> and confirm your fears <laughs> But then it goes back to what I said earlier, so what if people don't like you and <laughs> everyone's going to like you anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is tricky. We all want to be popular, don't we? We don't really like mm. the idea of people not liking us or thinking negatively about us, but that's the way it goes sometimes. That's life, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so let's now offer a bit of help to our viewers because obviously this show is about uh, trying to see whether it's in our mind or if it's actually uh, found grounded, what you know, what's going on is actually happening, it's really happening. So Gina, when should someone <laughs> come to a private investigator like yourself? Well, I think there's an awful lot more they could do before they before, come to a private okay, investigator like, like in what? this. Um, I mean, certainly he should be talking to his line manager about it, okay. because just talking to somebody a little bit more experienced or in a different situation might be able to offer some help, some advice, mm -hmm. and might also be able to start teasing out what lies at the bottom of his insecurities because there's, right. you know, there must be something there and it might be related to his job or it might be something related to his personal life mm. and I think a line manager should, if they've been properly trained, should yeah. be able to help them see a way forward. Not that the line manager should be the counsellor but they should be able to signpost them to maybe somebody like Catherine mm -hmm. or somebody who could support him with that. I think also the workplace has got certain things they could do um, around setting ground rules. Mm -hmm. So if, they were report if he reported that back to the line manager, he felt uncomfortable when he has his one-to-one -one sessions with them, then there was something the line manager could be saying, well, hang on a minute, should this be something that we need to revisit, mm -hmm. you know, the code of conduct or the ground rules that we, that we have, that we should be employing in our working situation. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, you know, taking the blame away from the employees directly and saying is there something the organisation can do oh, okay. as part of their, you know, good so practice like infrastructure, mm -hmm. infrastructure that should be in place in the working environment to be able to nip that sort of thing in the bud. Okay, so try the other, some other avenues yes, first. Yes, certainly, you certainly, you know, if, if they came to us, and we do have people come to us, I mean, that's the sort of thing that I would be suggesting to them. Um, and if they thought it, if, if it got to the point where it was really bad, then we would be referring them to ACAS right. to get okay. you know free help from you know a phenomenal support line that helps employers and employees mm -hmm. in that sort of situation. And they mm -hmm. would probably be saying the same thing: go to your line manager. Okay, all right. And and Dr. Catherine, um, when when is it time for counselling? I think um, you know 
if it's if it's really starting to get in the way of your life, if you you know it's 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 one thing going into work and coming away, or going into a situation and coming and feeling a bit rubbish. But if it's happening on a consistent basis, if you're finding that you're withdrawing from situations, you're avoiding situations, or you're feeling very anxious and stressed in situations, mm -hmm. you know you go home, you can't sleep, or you're you're just ruminating about it constantly. You know just when it's it's really impacting, yeah. that's that's a time that you don't just sort of keep trying to bat it out of your head. You've gone, you know, because the positive <laughs> stuff is 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 hard to find at that point. Um, but I think you know sometimes before you get to that point, it can be useful to sort of try and think through the situation mm -hmm. and try and be specific. You know, is there something specific that's upsetting you? Because I think sometimes people can just experience it as this ball of distress. And it's kind of saying, okay, actually, is there something specific? What, what is it? Try and label it, try and identify it. Mm -hmm. Because then you can communicate about it a bit easier. So, you know, but then again, sometimes people can't quite pick what it is. And then it's useful they to, to go in to yeah, so, so well. <coughs> an objective point of view. And mm -hmm. if people can't afford it or they can't get onto the sort of the waiting list or whatever through their GP, then, you know, sometimes a good friend and is, is just as useful as, as mm -hmm. that. Um, and there's lots of organizations out there that offer sort of supportive counseling through mm -hmm. many different life situations. So don't mm -hmm. sit and The main in thing silence. is don't keep it to yourself, whatever yeah. the situation, speak to someone. As yeah. we're always saying on this show, right? Always yes. speak up. Don't keep it to yourself because that's when things feel even worse than they actually are. Yeah. Ladies, it's been wonderful. Sorry, you were going to say something? Uh, no, I was just going to say someone gave me a very good tip when I had a real battle with a, with a job that I'd been doing for a long time. And I got to the point where I thought I'd tried absolutely everything, bored my friends to tears. And one of my friends came out and said, Gina, you need to understand the core principle, C-A-W. Anything in your life you have three choices, change it. Well, I tried to change it for four years and I hadn't been able to do it. So the next one is A for accept. Mm -hmm. I couldn't accept it because I felt my professional integrity was at stake. Mm -hmm. So the third choice was W, walk away. Okay. So <laughs> Very that, nice. That, but that, that was actually really, really quite a useful thing. Just, you know, th three little, three letters, mm -hmm. change, accept, walk. You know, at least it means you're taking control and you've got the choice, yeah. and rather now you're than walking out your own practice. Absolutely, wow, you see, <laughs> yeah. that's wonderful. It's been great talking to both no, ladies. Thank you. It's been really, really thank good fun, you. and I hope that's been really useful for the viewers tonight as well. But if you do want more help and you want more information about our guests, do visit the website chriscbshow.tv. And if you would like to talk to me about something, I'm here for you as a friend too. You can email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv. See you again next time. Bye bye for now. I can't even put them on. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready for... I shouted, sorry. All right. It's because you're far away from me, so I feel like I have to shout. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Okay, I've done it one more time, Bianca. Let's see. No, Chris. Yeah, but you said one more time, please. I'm standing on my own. There, I've done the challenge. I stood on my own. I've forgotten how to do this. I don't want to stop this one because it's so cold. Let's go. Let's show some more. If you want to get in contact with who? Okay. <laughs>